What does it mean to be a woman of the league? I think we're the backbone. He called me and he's just like, I got oh traded. And I was like, wait, what? When my heart is racing. I feel like I need to protect him, you know, from other people sometimes. My DMs get filled up with even like death threats, a good old word right now. I'm glad you said it and not me. <laughs> to him follow his dreams, it made me want to like, okay, like I want to get my shit together. What is your TikTok comments? You're having a baby right now. <laughs> we are like five words away from rapping people. Join us on the next episode. <laughs>
And honestly, it's like a way of spoiling yourself. Like some people like to spend money on bags or cars. And for, I think me and Isaac, we like to spend our money where, you know, going on a vacation. Although, unfortunately, I'm in the middle seat, even if it's an 18 hour flight. <laughs> Yeah, and Jeffrey never went on vacations either. He actually went on vacation for the first time um, for our second Valentine's Day. Actually, was it our first Valentine's Day? For a Valentine's Day celebration, we went out the country, and that was his first time going. And I had convinced him, I was like, let's just go out the country. And he was like, I've never been. He was a little nervous. Um, so we went to Costa Rica, and we loved it so much. Um, so yeah, we just like being able to, like you said, explore the world. And I feel like being able to have the money to have those experiences is just such a blessing. And he always tells me, like, you have a completely different personality on vacation. Like, I'm just, like, the best person. I, I don't get upset about anything. Yeah, I'm the no. best version of myself. I'm so happy. I'm, let's, let's order room service. Let's no, go to I the literally beach. call that vacation Isaac. Right, right. It's like, I named him. I named his personality Vacation Isaac because, like, he's always so frugal. But, like, on trips, he's like, well, let's get room service. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay. Kristen, I think you mentioned as well that you, you know, you didn't grow up going on a ton of vacations with your family every year. So yeah. what does that mean to you to be able to do that? I think like like everybody here, I mean, so many of us just know like what it means to be able to have the opportunity to do that. And like, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I didn't grow up going to like these amazing places. I don't think I left the country except, yeah, I think I went to my brother's hockey tournament once in Canada and that was <laughs> it. It wasn't really a vacation. But I think it's amazing to have that perspective and like, and always remember to like, not everybody has that. And also just the time, like my parents worked so hard and like, couldn't even just like get time off of work mm -hmm. to go take a vacation. Yeah. So I think just keeping that perspective always, it just makes you really appreciate being able to do that and knowing that not everybody gets to and like, okay. it's like so special. What are some of your favorite places that you guys have gone to in the off season? What are your favorite memories from off season? Ooh, I might have to say Egypt. I mean, Egypt. yeah, we went to wow. Egypt and we got to see the pyramids. And it was incredible being able to like learn about that like growing up and you never think ever that you're going to go and be able to see like these huge, you know, monuments and wonders of the world. And for us, that was incredible. I mean, we loved every second of it. And Isaac is like a his history buff. Like he loves to like go on tours and hear all the history. I'm just like, all right. Like, so it, so it. <laughs> it sounds like Isaac and Dalton have to vacation together. That would be like a perfect mm -hmm. duo. I will say, but Isaac doesn't like, I mean, he doesn't lay out. Like, he just doesn't. <laughs> so he so, refuses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, no, yeah. So, I, and I also feel like we're both adventurous people. I'm like, I could lay at home. And we live in California during the off season. So I'm like, okay, we have a beach right there. Yeah. So, whereas in you are in the mountains, you're like, I don't have a beach. But so when we're on vacation, I feel like we're very intentional about like learning about different cultures. Mm -hmm. And I hope that when we have kids one day that we're able to still continue that. I don't think we want to like stop that yeah. in the future. But I think we just like to learn new things and see different things and have different experiences. Yeah. How about you, Kim? I think you got you said that you go out of the country every Valentine's yes, Day. Yes, around I'm every have Valentine's to pick Day. Up that, that, right, that right. That it's it's habit. just the perfect timing because February is like we said, like the just like the perfect little time where you've kind of settled back into wherever you're going to be during off season, and then you get to enjoy yourself without having to like start getting back into training and stuff. But we went to Tulum and we went to Costa Rica. Um, and I honestly loved both. Costa Rica was so much fun. We went like horseback riding in the rainforest. Oh oh. um, and I actually grew up on a ranch. So like I love horses and Jeffrey had never been on a horse before. And he was so scared. And he was like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked to hear that your husband went on a horse. Right, right. He, he, was, yeah. he was like, um, he's like, what is he doing? What is he doing? I was like, <laughs> I was like he's just standing still. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was a lot, a lot of fun. Um, and there were like cows, like we came up across like a field in the rainforest where like someone was had all their cows and stuff. And he was like, are the cows gonna like run me over? And I was like, the cows don't care about you, Jeffrey. Like, you're okay. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I'm definitely the more adventurous one. I'm the one like telling him to like, let's go do this, let's go do this. And he's like, no, I'm not doing that. And then like, he'll end up doing it at the end of the day and stuff. So it's a lot of fun. So you're giving so much of yourself to your husband during football season. It really is, you know, all about them and supporting them so once the off season comes how does that shift or does it shift in your house yeah I would say adults um, just like he's he's an intentional guy so he's pretty intentional the whole season about like making sure I feel you know like I'm still heard still getting what I need to making sure my needs are met as well um, but I also do see like I just get more of him you know what I mean like 
like we talked, like more date nights, more fun vacations, more like I love fast food and eating terribly. <laughs> so like McDonald's late night, like dirty burgers from McDonald's are like our thing. And so I don't really get that from him in the season. So like in the off season, I'm like, okay, like you're gonna be on my diet for a little bit. Like we're gonna <laughs> eat terribly, we're gonna stay up super late and we're gonna sleep in. And so like he, he kind of compromises and, and does that more in the off season. Isaac turns into an Instagram husband. I'm like, I need this angle. I need yeah. this video. I'm like, get to work. Here's your to-do list. <laughs> and I feel less guilt asking the yes. off season too because I'm like, oh, like you're a full-time husband mm -hmm. now. Like we're gonna do this. We're yeah. gonna we're gonna get some pictures. We're gonna you get some are, videos. Yeah, at that point, he's yes. a stay-at-home husband. You're like, get to work. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, it's more difficult like by yourself to do content because then you have to set it up and then you have to go walk to the tripod and like see what angle you're at and then go back again and like do a fake video and then come back again and then make. Sure everything's good but like when it's just him I'm like you know what angle I think I look pretty at like yeah. can, you, can you get it together you so yeah yeah exactly I'll literally tell him like I'll hand him the phone I'm like, he'll be like where do you want it I'm like where I look pretty and he's like okay. <laughs> uh, gotcha got <laughs> right got right on. so um so it's way easier to make content I'm able to pump it out a lot more so that's where I'm kind of able to like get my momentum going mm -hmm. as far as content goes um and I'm gonna try to work on myself and do better during season but it's just way easier to have another set of hands that knows like what you want so they all become a DP as well during, yeah, yes, yes. during off right. season. Kristen, you mentioned that now that you've moved to Detroit, that you've been doing less modeling um, while you've been out there. So does that shift for you in the off season? I feel like you're traveling all the time. Yeah, I do. Tr I try not to. Like last year, I traveled a bit, and then it just I felt like I was missing out on so much, and I also felt bad leaving him there alone to like fend for himself <laughs> and like go through the stress of everything. So. I try to pick and choose jobs during the season that don't get me away for too long. Like I'll literally like last week I flew to LA for less than 24 hours. I flew in, did what I had to do and left because I didn't want to be away for that long. And like, while that's hard, it makes that easier. But yes, in the off season I am in LA. So it's a lot easier to take meetings or do whatever work I need to do. So once the off season kind of comes to a close, is it, very hard to transition back to football season? I'm, I think for me, by that time, I'm like ready. ready? <laughs> I'm so excited, like, and he's excited. I think like there's like, you start getting a build up pretty much after the draft. I feel like after the draft happens, like there's this kind of the shift and you're yeah. just like, okay, like we had our fun, but you kind of want to get back. And like, I don't know, I feel like we've just, we, we do love football season, even though it's hard and it has its ups and downs. It's just fun to get back into the swing of things and whether or not there's like drama in that whole like <laughs> a situation. It's like, I don't know. It's like, it is a, like so much of our lives that you yeah. kind of want to get back to it. I think for us, the shift starts happening. I mean, he's been a free agent the past two off seasons and he'll be a free agent again this off season. So I feel like the shift is like once he signs with a team, I've never been to Cleveland until he had already been signed there and was at OTAs for a month. So like once he is with a team and he's out there practicing, it's like, okay, like I wanna go out there. I wanna like start exploring the city. I wanna find a place to live. And yeah. I wanna know, like have all my bearings straight somewhat. <laughs> you never do. Um, but I feel like for us, it's a huge shift. And even like the last month of the off season where like they don't have to report, I think it's not really relaxing. Cause it's like, okay, let's get a moving company. Let's get yeah. this settled. Like, mm -hmm. how are we gonna get the dogs out? I'm driving across the country. Got that. Like I, I, so I think it's just like you like get off the off. You're like once the off season hits, you're like okay, let's get into a routine. And then it's like okay, we'll ho hold on. OTAs. Oh wait, shit, we're preparing to go back. And so I feel like it's I feel like you're always transitioning yeah. from like one period to the next. Yeah, I get sad every single time it's time to go back to season. I mean, like like we said, I'm very grateful for season. I'm grateful he gets to play football. Um, but I just miss him all the time. Jeffrey's my best friend, and it's like I just want to hang out with you. And I know you're gonna you're gonna be back in school pretty much. It's like they really go all day, and it's just like I know you're gonna be stressed out. I know that training camp is coming. I know that you're about to have to pretty much like, for lack of better terms, fight for your your life, your football life. Um, and I just know it's gonna be exhausting. You just you just know that a lot comes with it. Now I'm I'm back worried about injury. I'm back worried about all those little things that you just kind of slip away from your mind for a second. Um, mm -hmm. You're not really worried about injury as much during off season, even though that can definitely happen. Um, it's just not on your mind as much. So I go from like a piece, uh, place of tranquility and like peace and I'm just full of love and I'm so happy and I'm waking <laughs> up late and you can wash the dishes and all that stuff. And then it's coming around. I'm like, man, like my best friend has to go again. It yeah, always goes by so sure. fast. Yeah.
I think you'll also see as Jace continues to grow up that becomes more and more mm -hmm. of an overwhelming mm -hmm. feeling because they do miss so yeah, much. They do. Um, and it'll be harder for him too because mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's missing out and he right. knows that he's missing out as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does anyone else dread it a little bit? I think it's like, yeah, like a little bit of sadness. I mean, you're like, I'm married to this guy. I love spending time with him. And I mean, it's not like they're like gone forever. And, <laughs> I mean, and I will say like, you get the off season. So you're like, I feel grateful in that. Like a lot of people don't get an off right. season. Yeah. So you're grateful in that. But it's also still just like, okay, like you're, it's just like, I don't know, it's mentally sometimes tiring. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's just from my experience with like practice squad and I mean, moving to a place that we could get cut from at any time. Um, I think it's just like, that's a whole like different level of stress. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I feel like all the unknowns of the NFL, it's like, you know, that is your best friend. Like you said, like that's your other half. So you, you want what's best for them, but like there's so many unknowns that you can't control. So it's like, you can't control what's gonna happen. And I feel like just the stress of that too coming on, it's like, oh boy, here we go. Mm -hmm. Winnie, you just got married. Yes. Um, June? Yes, June 19th. Congrats. Thank you. Where'd you guys go on your honeymoon? We went to Jamaica and we did like the sandals over the water bungalow. Okay. Oh, how that was like by far my favorite vacation. So pretty. Also, I feel like too, just like, the high of being married like you know you're yes. just like in, on cloud nine you just got married and you don't have to plan for a week you literally mm -hmm. never have to plan a wedding again you get to just <laughs> go lay on a beach and enjoy your husband so i feel like that was by far my favorite vacation we've taken so far I'm guessing Dalton was not laying out by the beach. <laughs> right. One day we did like a, we like rode on bamboo down a river in Jamaica, which was like so fun. But <laughs> it was like the fifth day there and he was like, okay, we have to go do something. We have to go find something to do. And so he like found this tour operator and found this trip and he's like, all right, we're doing it. Let's go. Okay. Which ended up being so much fun, and it was a good. It was a good time. Yeah, it's like floating down the river, but Jamaica style. Yeah. Yes, yes, I like that. Yeah, like a river yeah, float. We like a yeah, on bamboo. Yeah. That sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, Kristen, who plans these vacations? Is it the guys taking the reins because it's now off season and you've just done way too much planning? Well, I think in our relationship, naturally, Jared is more of the planner, and okay. I'm more of the go with the flow. But I have since tried to take on more of the planning role. So I do plan it, but this last um, trip, our most recent vac vacation was in Cabo where Jared proposed to me. Yeah. Ooh. So he really had that one planned out and it was amazing because you're like, this is a really yeah, well plan. I was like, wait a second, we're going to, I was like, why are we going for such a long time? That was the first thing I asked because it was like a week long in Cabo and I feel like no when you're in LA, you just go week. for the weekend or something. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hmm, okay. Um, but he ended up having, we had the, proposal the one night and then the next day he had all of our friends fly in so he oh, coordinated wow. all of that I'm like oh, how did nice. you figure that out right so we had the whole weekend with our best friends um his best friends my best friends and that was like so fun oh, that was like a trip to, like I'm like I don't even need to get married I feel like that was like oh. mm -hmm. the perfect weekend what were the highlights uh whoo well it was just a lot of margaritas <laughs> <laughs> but um as there should be it's just really fun I think that's like the best part about a marriage or something is really fun to see like your your best friends coming becoming close with like his mm -hmm. best friends and like mm -hmm. seeing that together and just having all of the people you love so much in one place yeah. is just so fun like that was the highlight of my life like mm -hmm. truly it was just so cute to see it we all had the best time and it's hard to get right. grown adults right. in one place and I, I felt so honored yes. that all those people took the time to come down to Cabo <laughs> so did you know the proposal was coming you know, I kind of gave up on it happening this year. <laughs> I was like, I think it'll be next year. I told you guys he's like a year younger than me. And I just was like, I don't think he even knows how to get a ring. I don't think he's <laughs> asked my parents. I didn't, I just was, yeah. by the time OTAs were over, we're about to go back to Detroit. I'm like, it's not happening next year. We'll look at next year. And also I wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't in a super rush for it to happen. Cause I, you know, I knew it would eventually happen mm -hmm. when it was right. And, um, but yeah, he like asked my parents before he even went to OTAs Aww. and it was really sweet hearing the backstory of how stressed he was. And on our vacation, I was like the, the day of the proposal, we were at the beach all day. He says for anybody getting married, get 
get or getting engaged, get engaged in the morning because oh, that whole day was so right. stressful. Yeah. He kept like running away from me. I was like, where are you going? And he was like taking naps all day. I was like, he just needed to get away. He's like, I could not lie anymore. <laughs> I was done with the lying and I couldn't do it anymore. So it's funny hearing like the backstory that goes oh, on behind it. Mm -hmm. So can you give us the inside scoop on the proposal? How did it happen? Oh, what did he do? It was so, he did so good. I mean, he's like it I said, he's like a, a good dream, planner. Yeah. He's, he was had the roses. I think we watched an episode of the Kardashians and he got inspired. <laughs> <laughs> but he had some roses on the beach and mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, once I saw the roses, I was like, oh my God, this mm -hmm. is happening. Um, but up until that point, I really was oblivious. Like I almost didn't get my nails done. I was gonna wear like this crazy dress to dinner that night that I would have been like, I'm so glad I didn't wear it. He's like, no, I don't think it's that. Yeah. <laughs> white. Yeah, I know. I wish I was in. I wasn't in white. So that's how you know I really didn't know because right. I was in black. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. Okay. Um. So yeah, it, he did so good. And then we had a nice little beachside dinner set up for us after, oh. and it was nice. We had the whole that night together to just take it in and really like. Yeah. Enjoy it. And then the next day, he surprised me with all my friends. And mm -hmm. that was really fun. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah, it was the dream. It's crazy you oh. said that you were in all black, and that's how you didn't know. Because I'm also, when Jeffrey proposed, um, he was like, I was going out to eat with one of my friends, and he was like, um, you should get dressed up and like take a photo for Instagram. And I was smart. like, and I was that's like, smart I don't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he was like, he was like, but like we're in California, like just take advantage of the opportunity, just get dressed. And I was like, Nope. <laughs> so I wore I wore like some I wore like Converse or Vans and then I'm like in some black jeans and just a black top and then I realized I'm getting proposed to and I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, we're gonna have to redo this. There's no way. <laughs> wow, Matt was terrible. I literally woke up on the day of my engagement and was like I'm getting engaged today. Like I, oh my god. Oh, I 100% knew that I was getting engaged. I went, got my manicure. I was like, I'm getting engaged. Make them pretty. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely knew he was terrible at hiding it. Um, and then on the, we it doesn't matter how, but we were on a boat, and it felt like we had been together for four, three years, and it felt like a first date. I was like, oh my God, why are we oh, so, yeah. why are we so uncomfortable? Yeah. So nervous. Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> Awkward. Yes, it felt like I didn't even know him. Yeah. Yeah. That Anyways. is so funny. <laughs> but that's so nice that you guys got like that moment and you got yeah. to, it's just you two and then your friends coming. Yeah. Like that's just the cherry on the Sunday. What was that like when you saw them? And how did that happen? No, it was a surprise. I had no clue. Like, There's a I was video like, of it too. No more. Yeah, it's, it's on so social cute. media. Yeah. I was like, no more surprises ever again. Yeah. I hate surprises. So and he loves surprise. Not. He doesn't like to be surprised, but he likes to surprise me mm -hmm. because he knows it drives me nuts. <laughs> like my reactions to surprises is not like cute or anything. Like I get scared and like turn around and like cry. You literally turned around yes. the video and you were just. <laughs> I was like, no. Oh but it, I was so happy. It's because it's such an overwhelming feeling to yeah. like, have all these people like show up for you. That's it's like what you're here for me. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, I was just blown away by it. But it, yeah, it was really special that he did that. Mm -hmm. Oh. What are the other surprises that he's done that have uh, made you turn around and cry? The, the big one was my birthday. He surprised me. I think it was my, I don't even remember what birthday. It was our, I think it was our first year dating and he threw me a surprise party. And mm. I literally like, the video is like embarrassing. Like oh people are like, Kristen, like why are you like, like I was actually like crying and it, I don't even know. I was just so surprised and shocked. And like, mm -hmm. I just was really, the wool was pulled over my eyes. I had no clue. <laughs> I was like, you can't surprise me, but I guess I'm very surprisable. We must be very different. It's like Gemini, Pisces, yes, I don't know. Cause Gemini. I'm like, remember I like surprises. Right. I feel so <laughs> seen with surprises. Oh my God, it's my worst nightmare. I love surprises <laughs> right? so much. They, they, it makes me so mad. Like I'll get something for Jeffrey and then like, I'll be hiding it and then I'll feel like he's like looking and I'll be like, stop doing that. You know I like to surprise you. And he's like, <laughs> okay. I love them so much. I think I just don't like the FOMO aspect of it. Like I'm like, all of you guys knew you were coming here and like yes. you were all having like conversations without me. I'm yeah. jealous. <laughs> like, that's so I wasn't rude. on the group chat. Like I wasn't in the, like, yeah. I was like, I was left out of a group chat of all my best <laughs> friends. Right. Like uh, rude. <laughs> Whitney, I think you talked about, um, taking the off season to give back. What was it? It was uh, the Reisner tour. The Reisner up tour. The yeah. Reisner up tour. That was awesome. Um, what are the other ways that you guys kind of like get back to your roots and give back during the off season? Cause there is such a shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Dalt through his, um, he started a nonprofit when he was in college. 
Um, and he, this past year, actually created a scholarship to give back to both of our hometowns, like our high school. Um, so it's pretty cool. My, I'm from Chillicothe, Missouri, like a small town in Missouri. So we're still in the works of making that come true. Um, but very small town roots, very small town vibes. So um, we're trying to get that in order to give back to like our hometowns, which will be cool, like when it all comes together. Yeah. Um, but Dalt does a lot of really cool stuff. I don't want to take credit for the Rise New Out Foundation because it's it's all him. Like he has put it together and done so many things to like serve other people, um, which is really cool to like watch and see and be a part of now. And is that like something that you guys share together in the off season, even though it is, you know, maybe his baby? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he um, even like on off days, he's always like serving in the community at Denver Rescue or like going and doing stuff, reading to kids, um, giving coats, bikes to Safeway through Safeway or um, other organizations to give to kids that don't have those. Mm -hmm. um, so it's cool, like that I get to like tag along and be yeah. a part of that and. It's definitely like a great way to fill your cup and like feel like wow like doing something that's bigger than just me yeah for sure for sure so what what are the kind of things that you guys do in the community well aside from like the ticket giveaway this is gonna sound so dumb I like am volunteering for a uh, animal shelter I feel like that's something that I love no. I, awesome. okay yeah. I know cool. <laughs> sorry <laughs> this is a table full of animal yeah. lovers yeah. Yeah. Um, Some yeah, so I'm, I'm like, right now, uh, that's something I'm trying to do. There's an organization called Grin, and it's for golden retrievers. I like, yeah. I love our golden retrievers, and I'm like, I want to like bring awareness to like adopt, don't shop, mm -hmm. and uh, things that like I'm passionate about. And then I'll rope Isaac into that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's worked with various organizations. He loves to like volunteer and like hang out with kids, and, like. Mm -hmm schools his mom is a teacher so he loves like volunteering in whatever way possible and even like helping teachers like fulfill their wish list because like his mom like we know how hard that is as a teacher to like fulfill the classroom and snacks and and everything like that so i think it's like very different from for both of us but it's fun during the season, um, our women's organization hosts a lot of charity events and stuff that we try to make sure they do, and it makes it it makes it a little bit easier because it's already a busy time, so it's kind of already planned out, and you kind of just show up and help. Um, so we will do similar to you and kind of like tour with fans throughout the game and like take them on the field and meet the players and stuff, and then you kind of walk them up to the club area and eat a meal with them and talk to them, and they have like a lot of questions about like behind the scenes and what it looks like to be a football player and stuff. Um, so those are really fun because like you meet like high school guys that are playing football and they're just so excited like being vulnerable and like being like a big sister like talking about mental health I'm like it necessarily doesn't mean like going into the community and doing things like sometimes it can just make be making people feel heard and like being a voice for people that don't have a voice that's so yeah. true that's so true yes yeah. that's that's a good point very good point <laughs> Which also ties into Girls Inc. Mm -hmm. um, really nicely because you guys are all about empowering um, young girls. So how does Girls Inc. kind of take more center stage in the off season? Yeah, in the off season, I just have the time and I'm literally just available in LA where I can. I mean, Girls Inc. is across the country, but I work closely with the group in LA, and it's a six week program. And for those girls it's important for you to show up every week and then not just be like dropping in when, when you can. Mm -hmm. So I make sure I'm setting aside those six weeks and I'm making sure that I'm there mm -hmm. because it's like they might not have that support at home and they need mm -hmm. someone to rely on. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun. Last year I did it for the first time. And then through that we've built like a really good relationship and I just love that organization and it's fun to give back. And then Jared does separate things too. One of the things I'm most proud of is he was in LA and he made a promise to a school here that he would build them a library. And then after he oh, got yeah, traded, yeah. he still went back and did it. So oh. last season we did that, which was really cool. That's so awesome. even though he's in Detroit and helping the kids there now, he still wanted to make sure he kept that promise mm -hmm. to the kids in LA, which is really cool. Awesome. How has he helped you with uh, Girls Inc? Girls Inc is kind of like my baby, <laughs> <laughs> but he does get involved with, you know, donating items for auctions and things like that. And um, he, he loves it. He thinks it's like such a cool program. And Didn't he also though build a STEM lab, you said? That was for Detroit. So that oh, was for okay. a school in Detroit. He built a STEM lab for kids. So there is overlap with STEM. I was working with Girls Inc. doing STEM, and then Got there it. he was building a STEM lab. We had a very STEM-y year. <laughs> what, what is that, a it's STEM lab? science, technology, engineering, and math. So for the girls, it's just to get them excited about that kind of, not that I'm a scientist or anything. I think people <laughs> get confused with that. But it's just to get them excited about those um, subjects. So then when they walk into those classes in school, they think, 
that they have you know, a belonging there and they know what's going on and they can move into careers in that field. I love that you guys give so much back to your community during the off season. It's incredibly admirable, especially when y'all are going through so much because it's very unstable. I mean, I know Allison and Kim, they've been free agents now and in the past. And Whitney, I know that Dalton is in his last year of his contract, so he very well could be a free agent. Um, so how does that affect your off season, if at all? There must be a lot of feelings about that. <laughs> the first year Isaac was a free agent, uh, we didn't find out that he was a free agent until the day before free agency hit. So the entire time we were assuming we were going back to uh, Orange County and that was like a wake up call like, hey, good morning, like this is the NFL. Uh, but last year was a little bit more difficult. It was about a month before us knowing and throughout the month you hear from your agent like, oh, like this team or this team or they're interested in it. And so it's like you start like, like, oh, look, I could fit there. Oh, oh, like, blah, blah, blah. And then you just get a call randomly and like, okay, you're getting signed. Um, this past off season when Isaac learned he was signing with the Browns, uh, we were at our short-term rental property and we were like fixing it up and we had this whole week planned of like, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And he was like, actually, I'm flying to Cleveland tonight. Oh, wow. And I was like, great, like, love that. Um, I'm gonna need to call in like, my sister, my mom, like help me out. Um, but it's stressful until it's not. And then you look forward to it and then camp hits and you're like, oh fuck, I'm stressed again. Like it's just like, <laughs> it's a roller coaster. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it. Is there ever a fear in the off season during this time for you guys? Um, a little bit, and I mean, I'm not as uh, skilled and versed as in the handbook as you are uh, for me. <laughs> for me, it's like, I just don't understand a lot of things like these men get signed to contracts, but the contract can really be gone at any time. So it's like, I don't know all the logistics and it's a lot, um, but I just know that Jeffrey is a free agent, so I know that he's kind of up for grabs. Um, but I think Jeffrey is a free agent with, there's some type of- Restricted. Yeah, there's some type of stipulation to where the Jets do have priority over mm -hmm. him to where I think- So basically the, the Jets will get first priority and then they have to say that they don't want him and right. then it's like right. the, gate, the floodgates are open. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think they have to match anything that another team uh, presents him with if, the, if another team wants to pick him up. Um, so every single single year the Jets claim him really fast and really quick and I mean that's a blessing as well. So there's not too much nerves and I try to just like don't think about it just kind of let it go with the flow and we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah we haven't switched to another team yet since he's been in the NFL. We've been with the Jets all four years um, so I mean we'll just see what happens next. I think there's excitement in the unknown. I feel like so many people view it as such a huge con and yes I think that because I don't have kids and it's just me and my dogs like I think that, you know, I try to look at the best of every situation. So like while Isaac loves the Cleveland Browns, I love the Cleveland Browns. He likes the organization, the team, the teammates. It's also like, I feel like it's also my job, not my job necessarily, but I feel like looking always on the bright side, like, hey, if you, like you're cut, so you know what? Maybe something better is around the corner. Yeah. And maybe the something better is to stay here in Cleveland. Yeah. So I feel like just like embracing that adventure because there's gonna be time when it's over and you're gonna look back and be like, wow, I can't believe I lived in five different places in X amount of time. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it can be fun in some yeah, ways and exciting and- Like a fresh start. Yeah. Like you you can just like start over or, I mean, uh, while that has its downsides, it's mm -hmm. also, there's upsides to that right. too. And like finding out a yeah. whole new team and a new mm -hmm. system and all those things. Like I would have never imagined loving Cleveland so much. And I seriously love it. I'm like, I like if Isaac ends his career there, like I'll be happy. Like it's, and I never would have thought that. Yeah. So it, I think it's fun getting to explore new places, especially with the person you love. I mean, it's hard being away from family and all of that, but also look at the positives, like exploring a new city, like having this amazing fan base. And I think that can be fun too. Yeah. Um, kind of going off what you guys said, like it's exciting. I feel like the unknown is like super exciting. Um, but yeah, you have people that are like, aren't you like terrified? Like, you know, if something happens, like, you know, he, he could never be on another team. Like, you know, you have the people mm -hmm. that like, you know, they have those opinions. But honestly, like, you know, we both believe like God is so intentional and like mm -hmm. wherever we're meant to be, whatever is meant to happen is, is going to happen. And so I feel like giving that up to God and like just having that like, you know, confidence and it's going to be how it's going to be takes away like the fear of everything. But also like, you know, I'm always traveling, so I'm excited for anything that comes. Like, whether we stay there, whether we go somewhere new, like, I feel like it's just exciting. And also now that Dalt's my husband, like, it's it doesn't really matter where we go. Like, it's him and I, and, yeah. you know, we have each other, so that's really all that matters. 
Well, it's so nice that you have that because there is so much unknown in the world that you guys live in. Um, and that bleeds out, I think, into so many aspects of your life, really all aspects of your life. And one of those being, you know, finances. I think when people think of the NFL, there's so many misconceptions. And one of those is the finances um, that, that are wrapped up in all of it. Uh, I think finances is a sticky situation mm -hmm. and it's definitely an uncomfortable conversation. So I'm just gonna like address that right off the bat. Mm -hmm. But there is so much there to talk about and to address. So uh, let's meet here next time and get into that really uncomfortable situation. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> and talk finances. <laughs> <laughs>